Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome everyone to the lecture of chapter 7 uh, chapter 7 will be about uh, activated sludge system and this is uh, the lecture of part 1 okay now the conventional activated sludge uh, is considered as suspended growth system remember in chapter, se in chapter 6 we have uh, discussed two types of biological processes we have suspended growth and we have attached growth the suspending growth is where the microorganism is floating and mixing together with the uh, with the wastewater in one tank, and the attached growth system is where the uh, where the microorganism is at, is attached or stick to a certain media, maybe plastic, maybe wood or whatever. Okay, now conventional activated sludge system is considered as a suspended growth type because the microorganism will be mixing together in the aeration tank um, with the wastewater okay the name active cam came from the uh, the sludge that is returned to the aeration tank from the secondary clarifier later on we will uh, we will discuss more and we will know why we name it activated sludge okay so we have two uh, components basically the aeration tank and the uh, the uh, secondary clarifier okay this uh, diagram shows the two uh, the two main two main components the first component is the aeration tank the second component is the final clarifier okay and this is the line where the sludge is returned to the aeration tank what happened is that in the aeration tank the wastewater is uh, aerated to provide oxygen for the microorganism to grow up and to decompose the uh, organic matter. Then, in the final clarifier, uh, biomass or suspended solids, I mean the bacteria, will be separated from the wastewater. The wastewater will be disposed as effluent, and all the active, I mean, all the sludge. Uh, this sludge contains uh, uh, a very active amount of, uh, of microorganism. This will be returned back to the aeration tank. So the major components of this system is two. First is aeration tank and second is sedimentation tank or secondary settling or clarifier tank. Okay, now we have, uh, as I said just now, the microorganisms are settled in the final clarifier and then returned to the aeration tank. Why? We make use of it. We make use of the microorganism because it's still active and can decompose the uh, organic matter in the aeration tank. Otherwise, we have to provide cultures continuously and this is not uh, practical. Okay, the clear supernatant will be disposed from the final clarifier and uh, not all uh, sludge will be returned back. It's only a portion of the sludge will be returned back. That's why uh, we have to maintain a proper uh, ratio between the food and microorganism. What do we mean by food? Is the BOD? It's the organic matter, and the or and the microorganism is sometimes we refer it as biomass, sometimes we refer it as suspended solids. Okay, but basically it is microorganism. Okay. So this uh, this ratio should be maintained in order to to uh, to to have or to ensure optimum operation of the system. Okay, now what happens in the aeration tank? The aeration tank, the organic matter, is decomposed in aerobic condition, where the oxygen or air is supplied, and the supply of air or oxygen is accomplished through uh, maybe mechanical mixing mechanical mixing i mean or by air diffuser or maybe both okay and the air supply will also uh, increase and enhance the mixing in wastewater between uh, mixing between microorganisms and the wastewater okay now from now on the combination this combination of wastewater and biomass and microorganisms okay uh, all will be called the mixed leaker suspended solids mixed leaker suspended solids okay when we say biomass is the same or almost the same if we say the mlss is almost the same when we say suspended solids in this stage i mean in the secondary uh, treatment stage 
This is a photo showing the mechanical surface aerator and how they are uh, floating on the surface and uh, mixing the, the wastewater. And this photo shows the diffusers. Uh, we can see they are, they are placed in the bottom of the tank and they produce very fine bubbles of, uh, of wastewater. And uh, these bubbles will uh, increase the contact between the air, the fine bubbles, will increase the contact between the air and water and will provide more oxygen to the wastewater. This is another photo for the aeration tank from the top. Okay, now moving to the settling tank, the second component of the system. This uh, of course serves as a solid separation unit. Okay, it separates the separates uh, the biomass from the reactor and uh, settling or uh, uh, returning back a portion of this sludge to the aeration tank and the rest will be disposed. Now, uh, there are basically some advantages and disadvantages of the activated sludge system. Mainly the advantages is uh, that we can achieve high quality of uh, BOD removal up to 95%. Okay, and the effluent quality can be controlled by the sludge return. As we said just now, if we want to achieve or uh, we, we can we can control how much sludge we return back to the aeration tank in order to maintain a good ratio between uh, BOD and between microorganisms okay if we have a high flow I mean high concentration in the, of BOD in the influent so we can increase one of the options is to increase the ratio of sludge in order to to uh, maximize the uh, the rate of uh, decomposition okay if the BOD um, is getting lower, so we can we can adjust the the, the activated sludge return uh, ratio. And the disadvantages basically because it's only need high skill labor and high capital operation. That's why it's it's uh, it experienced these disadvantages. But uh, in terms of quality of removal, yeah, it's very high and it's very effective. Now let's move to the reactor design. Reactor design, we have two types of, uh, I mean, two strategies of designing the reactor. One is called the plug flow system, and the second called uh, complete mix system. What do you mean by plug flow and complete flow system? Okay, now starting with the plug flow system. So the plug flow system uh, in the plug flow system, the F over M ratio and the oxygen demand, which means the BOD, okay, the BOD at the inlet is the highest. Okay, you can see here, the BOD at the inlet is the highest, and then it will uh, progressively decrease, okay, reaching the uh, lower values at the outlet. Why? Because there is no such perfect mixing inside the tank and the aeration, of course, is continuous or is um, gradually distributed um, throughout the tank. While the complete mix system um, is where the F over M ratio okay, and oxygen demand will be uniform throughout the tank, as we can see here. The there is completely mixed starting from the inlet up to the outlet throughout the tank there is a complete mix of wastewater so there is no such difference between I mean there is no such difference in the BOD or the F over M ratio okay uh, from the inlet to the outlet so we can see the oxygen demand is uniformly distributed and also the uh, the supply or the air supply is also uniformly distributed so this is only uh, based on the type of mixing or based on the uh, mixing condition inside the tank okay now beside the conventional activated such system there are many modification um, in order to enhance the quality or reduce the cost of Activate, activated sludge system and these are the main modification and we will discuss them one by one 
First, the tapered aeration. Tapered aeration is where the air is added in proportion to the BOD exerted. Okay, so this is one type of like a, a plug flow system where the BOD at the inlet is the highest. Okay, I mean the oxygen demand is as the highest. So uh, um, we have to provide much air or much uh, air supply near to the inlet because there is more BOD and we want to grow the microorganism more rapidly and in higher concentrations at the inlet to match the BOD uh, concentration at the inlet while uh, near the outlet the concentration of BOD is lowest I mean is lower getting lower so that's why the air supply will be decreased also okay so this is called tapered aeration While in a step aeration, step aeration is similar to a complete mix flow, okay, where the the effluent is not only from one side, it's from different sides, or practically where there there is a complete mix or there is a very perfect mixing inside the tank. So that will make uh, that will the, that will make the F over M ratio throughout the tank is the same, and the BOD also throughout the tank will be uniformly distributed uh, in the tank so the the air compressing or uh, the air supply throughout the tank will be also uniformly distributed without any difference between the inlet or the outlet areas so what actually happens in the aeration tank well uh, there are two phases uh, take place in the aeration tank first the absorption phase and the second is the oxidation phase in the absorption phase um, the final organics the colloidals finely divided suspended solids and dissolved organic matter this will be absorbed on the activated sludge flocks okay and in the second phase the oxidation phase uh, the organic matter will be oxidated will be I mean will be oxidized by uh, by the or by the uh, microorganisms so can we separate these two uh, phases yes we can so uh, and this what happens in the contact stabilization configuration in the contact stabilization uh, in this uh, uh, configuration okay um, we separate we separate the uh, absorption phase and the oxidation phase basically so the absorption phase okay theoretically or ideally um, will be or will take a place in a separate tank here okay and uh, through this uh, phase uh, the air will be supplied to the wasted sludge okay I mean to the uh, to the recycled sludge okay in this tank and uh, here uh, the absorption okay uh, the absorption of organics will take place on the activated sludge uh, flocks okay and then and then this uh, sludge will be ready uh, to uh, to oxidize okay to oxidize the uh, wastewater and then will be return back to the I mean to the contact to a separate contact basin okay the thickened sludge will be uh, uh, returned back to a contact basin and uh, in this basin the oxidation will take place and then pumped to the secondary clarifier again and the system will continue again okay by using this uh, configuration around 50 percent around 50 percent of the volume can be cut off and this is a very significant uh, very significant cost saving uh, compared to the conventional activated sludge system okay this is the contact stabilization uh, explanations the wastewater is contacted with microorganisms for a much shorter time because we separate them in in different tanks okay the contact time is one to two hours while in in, in activate in conventional ones in conventional uh, systems the contact uh, time is much more 
okay after settling the activated sludge will be pumped to a re-aeration tank okay which is the uh, the tank where the, the the absorption will take place microorganisms will metabolize the nutrients they have extracted from the waste okay and this is also I mean this is this will be more suitable as we said just now for large variations in flow or BOD loading when there are so many fluctuations in the BOD it's not stable so the contact stabilization is much more effect effective to apply and that is the end of part one and uh, the next video will be talking about I mean will be uh, part two on the same chapter thank you